This is video number 1300 for me, and tonight I'm going to show you a little SMD meter I got from banggood.com. Kind of a neat little device that lets you measure SMD components in circuit. And in the cabinet, it's got the structure manual and the little meter. Comes with probes, so you can use it with probes as well. Looks like the probes just would plug into the end of the meter like that for, for testing in circuit when you can't quite get there with the probes. Looks like this thing takes a couple of uh, AAA batteries. Let's get some batteries in this thing and then we'll see what it does. Okay, so there's the meter. It's in, uh, looks like it's in ohms. Got a selector switch here. So that's DC voltage, and it only it has a maximum input as you can see here. It's um, maximum range is like 38, 36 volts AC and DC. So this is for testing low voltage components and low voltage circuits. From what I can see on here, we have a three position switch and uh, the R, DC is resistance, diode and capacitor test, which is the position on the left. The next position over is diode test, which gives you a, you can either use a relative voltage or it starts out with, looks like it's generating like 25 volts and it'll measure, and that's current limiting, it will measure the, uh, yeah, and that's exactly what it's doing. So if we look at this meter, this is generating 25 volts, right? 25.04 on one and 25.02 on the other. It's generating 25 volts at limited current for testing LEDs and testing diodes. So it should make them light up. So we'll test that. And then this third position is for measuring batteries so because it only supports up to 36 volts, you're going to only be measuring low voltage on this thing. It's designed for testing components uh, or surface bonded devices. Let's just test the battery. This battery is dead. It's only going to measure about two, just over two volts, I think, because this, this battery that I've got here is dead. But you can test a, there we go, 2.2 volts. And that's right, because this is a three volt battery. And this came out of a car fob. It's shot. This battery is dead. I think it measures around 2.3 or 2.4 volts on this meter here. So let's see how close it is. Okay, well this one's showing 2.9. but So it's not quite reading the same, although I think this one probably is putting a load under the on the cell itself because it's for testing, it, it's for testing batteries. Or if I put my fluke meter onto here and we measure this cell, okay. 2.2 volts. If I measure it just on my fluke meter without a load on it, it's going to measure a little bit higher because uh, there's no load. So this is a, a battery tester and it puts, uh, looks like 10 milliamps is what it's going to put on here. So that'll measure your button cells under load like they would be when you were using them in your, your car key fob or whatever you're using a coin cell in. This is going to put a bit of a load on it. So that's actually measuring the voltage. You can actually see the voltage is dropping on this cell that is dead. So that's the battery test function. In the RDC, this is for testing and depending on what mode it is with the function button here, we can test. This is a continuity test. So if I short the probes together, it's going to beep. The next one over is auto ranging. So this one we can test resistors. I have a old board here that will have some resistors and capacitors on it. Now see, to do this, to do this I'm gonna need my uh, magnifiers because these things are pretty bloody small. Let's just test a few resistors on here. This one says 150 on it. Let's just see what this component measures.
and it says 150. There you go. It says 15 ohms. Well, the number on here is 150, so that would be 15 plus no multiplier, so 15 ohms. This next resistor we'll measure is marked uh, 103. So that should be 10 with three zeros, so that should be 10K. So let's just test this one here. If I can get the probe on there. It says 9.7. 9.79. Don't know if you guys saw that or not, because the camera angle. I'm just gonna move the camera a bit. So or that was uh, which one was that? That was this one here, I think. Oh, I hate cipher spotted stuff. It's impossible to see. So that's showing 9.7k. It's a 10k resistor, so it's doing the job. Hey, it lets you measure. It lets you measure SMD devices in the circuit. How cool is that? You know, if you want to check the values, rather than get in there with your probes, you can just get in with one tool and check it. We'll check the next one here. What have I got here on this board? Um, this one here says on it it's four seventy two. I think four seven zero zero should be forty seven hundred. And as you can see, it's a uh, measure. Oh, this is tough to see what I'm doing here. And to try and get it on camera, that's a 4.7. So it's showing 4.657. That's uh, looking pretty good for a 4.7K resistor because you got to remember it is in circuit. So that's uh, measuring surface mounted resistors. Let's look at some capacitors on this thing. So if I press the function button, it'll put it into capacitor mode and now I can measure some capacitors that I have no idea what the value is because they're not marked. But these are capacitors and I can certainly put the meter on there. Uh, let's take a couple of these little, this board is shot so I can take parts off this thing. Let's pull a couple of these parts out and we'll measure them out of the circuit because I'm sure that there's other components in here that are loading this down, giving me a false reading. I've removed this little chip capacitor so that I can measure it. There, one microfarad. I would think that that's probably what this is, a one microfarad cap. That looks to be about the right value for something of that size. Uh, you can also measure diodes. Uh, should be able to do that in circuit. So if I press the button here to diode test, then I can just go to diodes and measure them. And you'll see that it should show me the voltage drop across the diode itself. The ter positive terminal is uh, th this top one here. So if I put this on this diode, I should... It's hard to show you guys on camera because where I want to hold my hand to hold this thing, it'd be blocking the view there's one polarity of the diode and if I turn this around the other way it should show open which it does which you guys probably didn't see uh, let's see if we can find another one here it's difficult to measure stuff on the board itself the sides measuring open and if I turn it around measure it this way there you go there's the there's the good side A 0.532 volt drop this direction and if I turn it around the other way it shows open oh well so that's measuring diodes. Let's uh, let's test some LEDs. I've got some light emitting diodes. I'll put this into the diode uh, test mode. And I've got some surface mounted LEDs as well. I'll just open up one of these ones first. There's a surface mounted LED, as small as it is. 
And when I apply power, it should probably light this thing up too. I would think it's going to light it up if I put it on the right polarity. There we go, it's red. So it'll light the LED up <clears throat> because it's providing it with enough voltage to light it up as well as measure it. If we measure a conventional LED, this is a white LED. If I put the LED on in the reverse direction, you'll see that it's measuring. The voltage is dropping from 25 volts to 24 volts. So there's a bit of a voltage drop across there. But if I put the LED on in the correct direction the LED will light and it shows me that this LED has a 2.691 volt drop so that's kind of a, a neat way of testing out LEDs I've got a few more of them in here in this parts drawer Many of these are left over from projects. Here's an infrared LED from a VCR. If you want to test an infrared LED, well, you're not going to see anything from it, but the tester will show you if it's got if it's dropping any voltage in the forward direction. It's a one volt drop. So that should be putting out a, a, a nice bright infrared signal. If I turned off the uh, infrared cut filter on the camera, you would certainly see it. Here's another LED. Don't know what color this one is. It's blue. And again on a blue LED, we have in this case a 2.69 volt drop. In the reverse direction, there's no leakage at all. So that white LED that's showing a bit of leakage is probably one that's getting a bit weak, and it came out of a it came out of a light that had failed. But this white LED here, as you can see, there's our 2.7 volt drop. But when I put this in the reverse direction, I'm seeing about a one volt drop. So this LED is probably on its way out. Other things that we can measure: capacitors. This is the 270 microfarad at 16 volt cap so if I put this thing back into uh, capacitor mode by switching it to the uh, RDC mode selecting capacitance put my capacitor across here let it charge up 272 microfarads and this is a 270 microfarad cap so I would say that that is accurate that's a quick look at this meter. Oh, it's got a hold peak on it as well, and it's got a relative mode. What does the relative mode tell us here? What's it say? It says, never used a meter on live circuits. The meter's a handheld and battery operated, very convenient, small tool, especially suited for measuring surface mounted devices. It can measure resistors, capacitors, diodes. Oh, Zener diodes and LED. So if we measure a Zener diode, it should tell us the voltage on it, um, providing it's less than 25 volts. And uh, has mo meter has continuity check, and we've already gone through that. Auto ranging, yep, we know that. It's got a relative button, whatever that does. Does it tell me what it does? Probably the relative voltage. I bet you that's what it is. If I push the, if I'm in the diode test mode, um, and I light it up here press the relative mode it should yeah it just shows it subtracts it from the 25 volts hmm. In normal mode it gives me the drop 
I don't know if I've got any Zener diodes here to measure. There might be some in here. But then again, probably just regular diodes. Let's just see what's in here. Oh, there's, some, there's a glass diode in here, but I don't know what it is. Get some red LEDs in here as well. Let's just measure this diode. Okay, what does this say? On this mode here. Point 0.6 volt drop, so this is a regular diode, as you can see. It just measures your cathode to the negative terminal, which is the bottom one. 0.6 volts, so this is just a conventional diode. This is a red LED, it should light up red if I'm in the right mode, right, right polarity. May not be any good, this LED may be dead. Sure enough, this LED is working, but it's very, very dim. This is an old LED. I don't know where this came from, but uh, the meter won't show anything here. I'll show a 1.5 volt drop, and, and the LED actually is lighting up. It is just so dim that it's not showing up on camera, but it, it actually is lighting up very, very dim. With the probes connected, it's easy to test conventional batteries. These batteries here are all weak, and they will show up as being weak 1.3 volts because the, the unit does put them under load 1.4 that one's a little bit weak as well 1.4 so you can see these batteries here are all weak if I test a brand new battery brand new battery comes up and measures 1.54 volts so it's a neat little tester that will test batteries under load. So that's a quick look at the SMD power meter. It's a, an HP 990C SMD meter. Got it from banggood.com. Link to this is in the description. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you real soon on the next one. Bye for now.